What's up, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of the Falcons In Focus podcast presented by Ticketmaster, recorded in the Ticketmaster studios. I'm Scott Bear. That's Tori McElhaney. As you know, man of the hour, Atlanta Falcons left guard Matthew Bergeron, who hails from Victoriaville, Quebec, Canada, mm-hmm. a rarity. There are not a lot of <laughs> American <laughs> sports figures that, that come from that area. And we're going to break down the entire journey and kind of what it's meant to you to get here. There's mm-hmm. so many great topics. But before we get there, we are interrupting Falcons in Focus for a French 101 with Tori <laughs> McElhaney. Yeah. Because we sort of figured lots of people are 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 down at MBS and they're, and they're cheering you on, right? Yeah. What's a way to get Matthew to hear what they're saying yeah. than to say it in his native language. Well, what, something that comes up, I hear, you know, artists when they're on stage, it's like mm-hmm. you always notice the people who aren't moving, aren't dancing, mm-hmm. are just sitting there. So we're kind of like trying, I'm trying to help people if they're trying to get a, like, get a hold of you yeah. on the field, this is what they should do. I also am from Chickamauga, Georgia. Our listeners know this. So the French language fascinates me. I'm, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to pronounce things correctly. Yeah. <laughs> I know this about myself, but I wanted to, ha- I have a few phrases that I, I, I want mm. us to be able to learn together. So the first one is simple. <laughs> it's just welcome to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. How do you say that in French? So welcome is bienvenue. Bienvenue. Yeah. Bienvenue mm-hmm. to a. Mm. Bienvenue a. And then Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah. Ooh. If you want to be real fancy, Atlanta. Ooh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. All right. That was a, that was a good one. Um, how do you just say like Falcons in French? In French, well, we 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 say Falcons because that's, okay. that's the name of the team. But like, like a real Falcon, mm-hmm. you would say Falcon. Oh, no. Okay. No. <laughs> it's not. No. Hold on. You got mixed up. <laughs> that's the thing. Is like I, by what's, bilingual. What's Falcons brain. in French? I don't know. I forgot. I forgot. Yeah. Hey, we'll cut that part. We'll, we'll <laughs> cut, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Dirty birds, it's time to rise up. All right. Well, we'll say dirty birds. Right. C'est le temps de se lever. <laughs> okay. So it's time, c'est le temps mm-hmm. to rise up, de te lever. De te lever. See, there exactly. So everybody take notes, and then if you're sitting on the home sideline, yeah. then it's time to say those things. Then <laughs> he's going to be like, what the? Okay, yeah. So give me rise up again. Let's rise up. To Levy. To Levy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To Levy. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's great. I love this. This uh-huh. is so See, fun. So we so we've we've got our basics on if you're a Matthew Bergeron fan, of which I have seen number sixty five multiple times at multiple home games. You yeah. have a little crew. <laughs> yeah. I, I think. Yeah. I think I think to be honest, like since we don't have a lot of like NFL players, you know, from Quebec, I think like People, people are like, all right, we're not gonna cheer for a team. We're gonna cheer for somebody from home. Sure. So yeah, that's that's pretty cool. And I think New York. I think New York is gonna be the game where a lot of people go down. I, I know I got a lot of fam- family and friends that are coming down. So I think it's gonna be a lot of Matthew Bergeron jerseys in the stands. I love and, it. And you're a long ways from home, but mm-hmm. what does that support mean to you? Whether you see it at the home stands, I'm I'm sure you hear it a lot from yeah. on 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 social media. Mm-hmm. What does that mean to you to kind of represent that? Well, I th- I think it means a lot, you know. It means like all the hard work that I put in. I think like people saw that and kind of got like attached to it and like, mm-hmm. all right, this this guy is representing not only Quebec but Canada as a whole. And just having that type of support, you know, whenever whenever I have a bad play or a bad day, I just gotta remember that like I got a whole country and a whole you know province behind me. So I'm you know grateful to be in this position. Not a lot of people can do that because like there's a lot of football players from Georgia, like right. you know what I'm saying. Like yeah. so, not a lot of people have that type of support to have. So I'm definitely grateful for it. I love that. Now, I wanted to, to go back in time a little bit because, obviously, I feel like hockey is the main sport of not just Canada, but probably Quebec, if, mm-hmm. if I'm yeah. assuming correctly. Mm-hmm. For you, when was the first time that you really wanted to, like, start playing? Like, what was your introduction to football? It was, it was kind of random. Like, really? Like, in my hometown, Victoriaville, I don't know if they still do it, but back in the day, you used to get, like, a, like a sheet through the mail like all the you know the the sports uh provided throughout the summer and my mom was like you want to do a sport blah blah i think you should should get moving i was a little chubby <laughs> kind of lazy uh <laughs> she was like man you should try something and, you know only a mother's love yeah mother's right love. <laughs> yeah. and you know obviously football is a sport that you know anybody from any shapes and sizes mm-hmm. uh can find a, can find a place in football so she she signed me up and at first i hated it like i never played another position that offers alignment my whole life all right mm-hmm. So like at first when you play offensive line like it's, it's it's boring like you always get yelled at 
Like, it's always your fault. You're sweating. You get hit. And all your friends, and you know, they making touchdowns. They making tackle. They making yeah, sad. The they get their ones. name calls up. Uh-huh. But, like, with time, I just got to, you know, love the position. And, you know, obviously in the locker room, you can sense that people have a lot of respect for, you know, the offensive line. I think that's what beautiful thing about it just just working in shadows and you know having to respect your teammates yeah i love that you bring that up because i was doing research for this podcast and there was a quote that you had where you called playing offensive line like that it's a beautiful position Mm -hmm. and i thought that was so cool because you're exactly right like this is not a position that this is one of those things that it's like the mundane goes so far in this position and it's not flashy and you're like what you say you're not getting your name called but Mm -hmm. like why for you was it like this position that you've played your entire life, why is it to you that it's like a beautiful position of the game? I feel like, just like I said earlier, just just working in the shadows and like people people in the locker room knowing that like, all right, like without you guys, like nothing of this happened. And also I love kind of the grimy aspect of the offensive line, yeah. the physicality, like, it's you know, right. imposing your will on somebody and just, and just, you know, putting somebody down like that. That was really, you know, what kind of got me into it. Once I fell in love with, you know, office in line, I was like, man, I love this. I love putting people on the ground. I love being physical. So, uh, th- yeah, that's what made me fall in love with it. Did you ever want to play another position? Like, was there ever a point in time you're like, coach, come on, just like put just me in like, as like a tight end or something, man. S- so we had a play in the Syracuse. It never got called. I was supposed to catch the ball. Oh. Yeah, I never got called. Just but, to know that it's there, too. <laughs> it's there. It was yeah. there. It was there on the game plan. So during the week, I – we called it like on Tuesday, and I dropped it. Oh, no. <laughs> so no, I know, like we can't put it in. Yeah, I know Coach Bravers was like, "Yeah, I don't think it's gonna happen." <laughs> and then we called it back on Thursday, and I caught it. And I don't know. It was in the game plan. Never got called, but I feel like if I'd have been a little bit, you know, skinnier and faster, but well, obviously a lot faster. I think I would have been a receiver. I would, uh, you know, love yeah. to be a receiver. Yeah. yeah. So when 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 you're just playing this game and you're realizing that you have a passion for it, at what point? do you start dreaming about, oh, where can this take me or what can I do? Like, mm-hmm. like where does that enter your head and when did that start happening? See, for us, for, for like for us back home, like to be honest, like n- until my like second year, third year at Syracuse, I didn't think like playing NFL football was possible for me just based mm-hmm. off my background. Like, you know, I only had one, you know, offer out of high school, out of Canada. I only had one offer and it was Syracuse. And I kind of got there and people like really weren't sure like what it was. I was kind of like a, project or whatever would you yeah, call it like yeah. i showed up at a the camp they're like oh this kid <laughs> tall big can move like, all right we'll, we'll, we'll offer him so i showed up to syracuse not really knowing what you know what was my future because like growing up there weren't a lot of people from my hometown making it th- through college football and you know making it through the nfl so for me i was just like all right i'm gonna enjoy this mm-hmm. and then you know seeing my teammates at syracuse uh andre cisco uh Melifuanu, those guys making it to the league, I was like, all right, if those guys, you know, made it, I could make something with it. And, uh, you know, throughout the years, my confidence just got higher and higher, and then now I'm here. So mm-hmm. yeah. I love that. Now, for you, I actually was reading something, in, something along the lines of, like, that your mom, around the time that you were, like, 14 years old, that you and your mom would go to – now, pr- this is where the pronun- pr- pronunciation is not going to happen. Let's do it. Roj et or games? It's – a, you don't pronounce the T. It's oh, okay. The T makes A. So a, okay. Rouge or. Rouge or. Mm-hmm. So that was my dream school. Like, okay, that's so, yeah, so, yeah. So, so yeah. tell us more about what that is. Yeah, so that was my dream school. So basically, that's college football in Canada. Okay, okay. So it's not as big, you know, obviously on this side of the border. We don't know about it because mm-hmm. there's not a lot of media kind of into it. But I, that was that was college football back home. And that's what I dreamed of, you know, growing up playing football. So I thought my future was there. Mm. And when I got the the offer of Syracuse, obviously, you know, free tuition and all that played into it because uh, there's not scholarships for college football back yeah. home. So, you know, a lot of my friends have to work, go to school, play football. So it's 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 a hard grind. I respect it a lot. And, I, you know, I'm blessed to have the opportunity to be here, you know, went to Syracuse and be here now. Let's talk about Syracuse because my favorite thing is that when you were talking about that camp that that you went to, Mm -hmm. I believe summer of 2018, if that's correct. Yeah, that was 18. Yeah, okay. 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 I know, I try, we try, we try. But for for that trip, something that I I think I remember reading that you said somewhere was you called it like a road trip just to see American football. Yeah, that's really what it was. Yeah. It was like a six hour trip, right? Yeah, so so we took the bus, bus. We, we hopped on a bus. Drove down, I think, with like six, seven hours. A bunch of guys were just happy to go down to the United States, you know, get to learn American football and also compete and, you know, test our skills and, you know, obviously learn from 
coaches from you know college football which we don't have back home so mm-hmm. it was it was a learning trip for us so right. I, for me i just took it all right i'm down here road trip with my boys you on the bus having fun we get to sleep at a hotel free trip it was cool <laughs> mm-hmm. so i get i get to the camp and i'm like hold on i i can't hang with those guys like they're not yeah. that you know what i'm saying so so my confidence got you know grew and then i just started embodying people and after practice coach babies was impressed and he offered me and then you know that that was it that's all she wrote you know that doesn't happen very often, right? Yeah, right, right, I show right, up yeah. at a camp like, and they're like, "Here's a scholarship." And, and I mean, yeah. give us the, the 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 story, but but behind that, I don't, I don't, I'm mm-hmm. sure that was the farthest thing from your mind. Yeah, and and the crazy thing is, like, I didn't know what a scholarship meant. Like, mm. wow, okay. I didn't know what it included. Right, like, mm-hmm. you know, you hear scholarship all the time, but you don't know like the details of it. Like, so when I, when Coach Barry told me, I was like what school's free like you're gonna take care of me like he's like yeah i said all right i'm i'll, I'll be here he's all right you're just enrolled you know next year i said all right perfect so went back to high school for uh for another year and then enrolled in syracuse in 2019 that was my freshman year so that's kind of how it happened like it just kind of happened you know right. what i'm saying i was learning through the process because you know nobody around me had the experience that mm-hmm. you know going through college football so i just went in there blind like you know what i'm saying but what was your mom's reaction to everything that happened there? Because your mom's such a huge part yeah. of your life, yeah. and then all of a sudden you're you're talking about playing, you know, American mm-hmm. football, going to have a scholarship, and then now yeah. you're on scholarship, yeah. going to Syracuse. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, what was her reaction? What was your family's um, reaction to such huge news? Right, right. I mean, they were extremely proud, but I think like low key, like they didn't really know what was going on. Yeah, like, right. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, they didn't really know what was going on, but they supported me the whole way. And obviously, there was kind of steps to it. Like I had to get uh, do certain class in Quebec to you know be be able to go to school here in America. Mm-hmm. So I had there, there were some you know steps that I had to go through just to be able to come down and go to school here. And she supported me throughout the whole way. And like I said, like throughout that whole year, we was just learning as as the days went on and right. figured it out. And you know now. You know, I'm in a position where, you know, kids from Quebec, like, they can hit me up and I can help them, you know, you know, go through that process because I've been through it. Now, there's a lot more Quebec players uh, in college football now, so it's, it's, it's great to see. For you, you talk about uh, going to Syracuse and kind of just, like, figuring it out as you as you go mm-hmm. along. A part of that, too, I, I believe from conversations that we've had before was, obviously, French is your first language, and you had taken – classes mm-hmm. to learn English yeah. like growing up and everything but really and truly like this was more the first time when you get to Syracuse and mm-hmm. you get to college that you're around people who are speaking English 24 7 what was kind of that experience like for you oh, that was funny like I wish we could have some of my teammates for my freshman year here with me like <laughs> in 2019 like I couldn't have had a conversation that we're having right now like that's wild because you're so you're so well spoken with it, yeah everything. it was just like I had the basics like you know you guys learn Spanish right like yeah if I was saying you spent like to uh, Mexico right now to go to school to go to college, like it'd be kind of a shock. That's that that's what it mm-hmm. was for me. I just kind of learned like I have philosophy classes that like I was just in there like what is going on? Like <laughs> teachers speaking fast, I got to take note and like I, I just figured it out as the days went on and my English got better and you know COVID happened and I had to stay in the U.S. for a whole year because the borders were closed and I feel like that's really when my English kind of got better because I was around. English speakers all the time, and uh, my girlfriend, she's she's an English speaker as well. She, I mean, she's American, so kind of having her with me, I mean, my English got better. So yeah, and you know, it's funny because, like, I used to ask my teammates, "Hey, what, what does that word mean? Like, what, what do you say? Like, right, yeah. what, what, repeat that? Like, yeah. and, and we, they used to make fun of me and all that, but they were great. You know, they helped me a lot, and it's it's, it's just you know part of my story, and I'm just blessed to gone through what I've gone through. You know what I'm saying? It's and fun. there's no accent. No, right. yeah, you, yeah, that's yeah. I, I, I lost it. I, feel, I know, and and something too, like you got to care too. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I learned English, but I was, I I care about how I'm, you know pronounce word and how I have right. conversation with people and like, you know the uh, the verb past tense and you know I, I care about that stuff. So it was it was important for me to learn because I think it's important for me to you know express myself, be able to express myself, and you know have conversation with people because I'm a social person. So, yeah. yeah, I love that too. And th- I think another part of this too is like learning the football language Mm -hmm. like you're you're trying you're actively like trying to get better at english and and conversing in social settings but you're also all the while learning the language of football and and understanding like what certain play calls are and everything what was that process like did you have to because the reason i ask this is because 
Young Wei Koo has been on this podcast, and he talked about how football was actually a way that helped him, one, make friends and make mm-hmm. connections, but also kind of learning English because he would, like, ask another player, like, hey, what did they say and what does this mean? Yeah. And was able to, like, within the playbook understand mm-hmm. it. Did you mm-hmm. have something similar? No doubt. Like, I feel like my teammates are the, ra- are the reason why, like, my English is so good now because I used to go, you know, go to them, ask them questions. I feel like without them I wouldn't be able to, you know, pronounce a word. And obviously – like when you don't know how to speak the language, like you're, you're kind of a little shy, and having the football, having your teammate, it was kind of, e- you know, ease the transition. Obviously, the football, that w- that w- that was tough, like learning different terms, because right. you know, obviously back home it was in French. Yeah. So <laughs> I kind of had to transition that too, but uh, I think the the veterans that year they took care of me, and obviously they saw how I cared and how yeah. I really wanted to figure it out. So they they kind of took me under their wing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, as you're going through your college experience, right, then you get to a point where I think it was week seven, I believe, you're getting ready to, as a freshman, you're getting ready yeah. to play Florida State. Yeah. yeah. That, so that was that year. So everything yeah. happened that year. That was Everything year. happened big that year. year. Yeah, big yeah, year. Yeah. Yeah. Huge year. Okay, yeah, so, so it was my true freshman mm-hmm. year. So yeah. I was the second tackle. I was like the, the sixth man up, right? And the, the right tackle at the time just quit the team. I don't know what happened. He just quit. So I, I, go, I go to practice expecting, like, you know, just no. playing my role, you know what I mean? So I get bumped up at like first team or like with two practices in a week, ready to go play Florida State. They're like, yeah, Bergeron, you at gotta Florida go. State. At yeah, Florida right. State. Yeah, right. That's like, a, that's the yeah. kicker there. Yeah. They're like, yeah, you gotta go. You know what I'm saying? So the old reliable had to figure it out. You know what I mean? Get thrown in the fire. You know, right. you get thrown in the pool. You got you gonna figure out how to swim. So you know what I'm saying? That, that, that's what happened, and uh, you know I'm grateful for it. And I think like the the biggest thing for me then was just. All right, you just got to survive. You can't mess up. Right. Mm-hmm. So that that was my mentality when I f- first got thrown in there. And then, you know, as the years went on, I got more and more confidence. And my p- the, the, the football side kind of slowed down. Mm-hmm. So I was able to see things better and, you know, be more comfortable at the position. What do you remember about that day and kind of leading up to that first start? It, you know, at Florida State, yeah. that's – I mean, a lot of people know how how big of a deal that is, and yeah. t- especially for that to be your first start mm-hmm. away – and really and truly, I feel like it's almost like the quintessential, like, American football moment. Like, yeah, right. Like, everybody knows Florida State. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what about that day do you really, like, recall and remember? Oh, I remember, like, everything. Like, so, <laughs> the night before, I couldn't eat. I went to the bathroom, about, like, five times. I couldn't sleep. <laughs> so, we get to the stadium, and then, you know how Florida State, they do the little... Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. they're, they're chopped. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And then, so, we're, we're, we're in the locker room, and all I hear is, like, a pound, like, and I'm like, wow. oh boy, this it, <laughs> it's it's rocking. So so we get out of the tunnel, and it was just spectacular. Like the the whole thing, the whole crowd, it was sell out. And like I don't remember anything from the first drive. Like I was just trying to hold on for dear life. Wow. And I feel like I, I did kind of good job. You know, as the game went on, I got more and more comfortable. And uh, they had a pretty good, you know, Florida State always had some pretty good defensive line. So it was a good learning experience. Mm-hmm. That's just. To, to enter like and and then you you just kind of took over right yeah at, yeah at, from at, at that point mm-hmm. you felt like you were in the flow of it it's so interesting when you hear about all these things where you think oh it's you know it's not really in the realm of possibility for me to play american football and then you get a scholarship and yeah. then it's not you know and then you just kind of keep proving yeah. yourself mm-hmm, no you doubt. know um time and time again which i i just think is so fascinating it, how does your kind of confidence level move throughout all these processes? Is this something where even back to the camp, you're like, okay, like I can play with these dudes. Yeah, no Or doubt. is your confidence at through these moments slowly getting bigger and bigger? I think it was just keep getting bigger and bigger. Like once you do it, once you prove yourself to do it, that's when like it clicks for me. When I, yeah. Once I prove myself that I can do it, like all right, now I can hang with these dudes. I can, and that's when my confidence get bigger and bigger. And, you know, Florida State was a great learning experience. And I feel like, one of my biggest accomplishments that, you know, hold on is, like, I held on to that spot. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, right. I started, uh, you know, I went in there week seven, started, and then I didn't get taken off. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I held on to that spot for 49 straight games after that. And so that, that I think, like, personally, that, like, that's my biggest accomplishment. Mm-hmm. And you brought up uh, the pandemic and, and COVID-19 and not being able to go back home for essentially mm-hmm. a year. For you, what was that year like for you? Because I imagine you weren't able to see your family yeah. either because they're back in Quebec. Yeah, so so Syracuse is like five hours from my house uh, in Quebec. So my family was there every home game in 2019. Mm-hmm. And then 2020, borders shut down. Like, 
you had a, if you went back home, you had a quarantine for two weeks. Like the, mm-hmm. the rules were <laughs> right. It was pretty, pretty intense. Pretty great, pretty yeah. intense in Canada. So, so coach didn't want me to take no chances. You know, being getting stuck over there. So I just stayed. Uh, went through the season. We went one and ten. So that was that was a tough year, and I couldn't see my family. Like yeah. that that was that was a long year. But you know, I'm blessed to have you know to have technology and be able to FaceTime and my my teammates played a great part in that, just keeping me up. They they kind of became my family and. That's how I became so close with those guys. And you're, you have three siblings, and your mom, right? Mm-hmm. And this, and we're talking tight knit. Yeah, right. Yeah, pretty, mean, like, yeah, pretty tight. Pretty yeah, tight. I mean, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. How much you know, like, have your siblings? We already talked about your 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 mother to a certain extent, but having that kind of core mm-hmm. group to always be um, behind you and you supporting mm-hmm. them, like, yeah. how important has that been to everything that? That, that that you've done that you have that foundation mm-hmm. you have that bedrock yeah. there for you i mean it's the most important thing like playing football you're gonna have your ups and downs your highs and lows but the only opinion that matters is their opinion like they four group of people right there they're my family like that's the only thing that matters to me so whatever is going on if i have a good game or a bad game like i kind of keep it like you know like a flat line i don't get too high too low whatever happens like i know my family's gonna be there for me and uh, just having that support was incredible, and I know I'm blessed now. Like people have that, and like we move as one. Like they mm-hmm. they they come in as many games they they can right now. My little brother started playing football. He's a left guard. Nice. Is he really? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a little So 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 I'm so I'm trying to teach him a little bit, and uh, it's, it's just great, man. I love that. Now to wrap before we really wrap up, I I want to go back to the night that you were drafted. Mm-hmm. And that's one of my favorite videos and phone calls is hearing, you know, you talking to Terry Fontenot about the opportunity and everything. But as I was going back and doing research, there was a quote that you had when you committed to Syracuse and you mm-hmm. said um, committing to Syracuse was exciting, not only for me and my family, but also my province and Canada. Mm-hmm. As you're kind of talking about, you know, your your siblings back home and other people back home in Quebec or, or just any part of Canada. I mean, how much in that moment of being drafted are you sitting there even like consciously thinking, wow, this is pretty dang cool that someone from Victoriaville, Quebec, right. Canada mm-hmm. is sitting here on the phone with the Atlanta mm-hmm. Falcons about to go play in the NFL. Yeah, I mean that that meant everything. Just being being able to be back home for that event, like yeah. that was the biggest thing. Be able to be mm-hmm. in Victoriaville, where it all started from, with my family and friends, and a lot of you know a lot of guys have different ways to do it. And for me, like I wanted the media from back home to be there, so like kids can see that you know it's mm-hmm. possible. You know what I'm saying? Like if you put the work in, like don't believe the Oh, if you're not from the U.S., you can't make it happen. Like that—that that was the biggest thing for me. And you know, I'm I'm grateful to be in this position. And you know, um, I just I just want to be a good example for those kids and keep putting on for Quebec. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you've kind of you know blazed that trail so mm-hmm. people right. can understand. All right, like here, like here's the way that you can do it if you you know put in work. Yeah. And this is something that Tori mentioned during our conversations and uh, maybe I'll let you kind of take it from here just in, in what Tumbo said and what oh yeah. I, I just think it's an important term yeah so when you were drafted I do this thing where I, I have conversations with some of the scouts and about like you know why you draft these guys mm-hmm. why you care about this one guy and what what really stood out and I was having conversations with coach led as well and every conversation that I had with scouts they're like this is a guy who is self-made mm-hmm. he is Everything that he has gotten, he has earned. And I think, like, just seeing that through your story step and step and step, it's like, okay, this is a guy who just decided, like, let's go play football. That seems mm-hmm. interesting. And then mm-hmm. you go and just happen to go to this camp at Syracuse, and it's like, here's a scholarship, and then you're a starter, and then you don't let that go. And then it's like you're in the NFL draft, a, mm-hmm. a guy who didn't ha- had one offer from right. Syracuse coming mm-hmm. out of high school in Canada. Do you almost feel a sense of that, like, self-madeness to yeah. a certain extent yeah and i feel like i carried that self-made mindset like with me like being drafted was great but like the way i see it it's not the end of the road like there's yeah so much more that i want to accomplish you know not only for myself but for the football back home and obviously for the city of atlanta because they gave me the opportunity to play at this level but like i keep that mindset like i'm i'm not satisfied just being drafted and playing in the nfl like i want to want to be great at what i do so i put my head down at work and just keep that same mindset they're gonna be highs lows you just gotta keep pushing i love this story you know and and i think self-made is it's just such a 
it's a perfect term for it. And when you keep hearing it over and over and over, it mm -hmm. totally kind of makes sense. Um, now we're on to the rapid fire portion of our podcast. <laughs> Everybody gets the same five questions. Um, there are no right or wrong answers. Um, and but, but we will judge the answers. Oh, so, so uh, be ready. Okay, the your favorite play of your career, high school, college, youth, it doesn't matter. Your favorite play. I was a screen of Virginia Tech, and I just drove this guy down the field and just <laughs> dumped him. <laughs> and we and we ended up winning that game on last play of the game. So yeah, Virginia Tech. Love that. I uh, love how how quickly and decisively I know. Those, yeah. that, that it comes to the mind. I know, yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's Fantastic. how you know it's a good play. Yeah, like, it was. It, it was. It <laughs> in the back of the head. All right, who was your favorite player growing up? Uh, so he was a Quebec player, uh, Laurent Duvernay Tardif. He okay. Was, he was, he was, so he was an office lineman. He was a guard, and he was a doctor. So Sweet. and he was from Quebec. So I was, I got his jersey back home still, and he was the person I you know looked up to. Have you ever gotten a chance to meet we, him? We talked, um, you know, over social media and everything, cool. but with with the whole process, the draft has just been a lot crazy, mm -hmm. and ho you know, hopefully in off season we get a chance to meet. Love that. Yeah, things slow down after your rookie. Yeah, year, right. Yeah, right. yeah <laughs> you finally. It's get a an long year, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, but yeah, he he's such an inspiring story mm -hmm. too. Yes, one hundred percent. You know helped so many people mm -hmm. in need and been a darn good uh, football player as <laughs> yeah. well. That too, yeah. Uh, yeah, for a long time. Um, a movie or TV show that you're binging or that you recommend? Entourage. Yeah, there, you go. there it is. Man, I, I binge Entourage like like in a month. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, like I, I, like right now I'm kind of lost. I'm kind of like, I don't know what to watch because like, <laughs> I want it to match like the – The level yeah, of like the level, how good right? it was. Yeah, 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 how good it was. Yeah. So I'm like, damn, I might just rewatch it because <laughs> it kind of reminds me of my group of friends. So it's, it's, uh -huh. it's I love funny. that. That's perfect. I love it. Okay, um, when you were younger, like before football was ever in the realm of possibilities, what did you want to be when you grew up? Man, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. I, to be honest, I really don't know. I think – I really don't know. It was like really fo football was it. Like when once you like, once I figured it out, football figured, was it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah once you're like ah uh, yeah. <laughs> at first, I like NFL. I didn't think it was possible. So for me, it was CFL. Like All right, right. I gotta yeah. make it to CFL. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So yeah, I, I say football. I say okay. Football. Cool. I love it. Uh, what is your favorite food from back home? Poutine. Poutine. That was a quick one. Knew it. It's poutine, French fries, cheese curds, gravy, and then you can add whatever. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. No, no I think that's a great, a great. I mean, I don't know what else there is besides poutine, but like that, that makes sense. No yeah. doubt. And I had, so I've been in America for like what, since 2019. Right. And I've had the best poutine in America like two days ago here. In really? Atlanta? In Atlanta. Oh, you yeah, got yeah. yeah. Wow. So wow. it's, it's by this person, right? Uh, his company is the food I like. Uh huh. So he kind of just catering stuff. He comes to your house, oh, cooks a great. bunch of stuff. That's so cool. I had my family over and he came. And I was oh, like, you did. That's awesome. And he was like, yeah, I know you're from Quebec. Like, you want me to try some poutine? And at first I was like, ah, man. It, if you're not going to like, it no, got it got to yeah, be good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was a little skeptical. But like when it came out, I was like, wow, he got the cheese from Wisconsin. So it was, Ooh, I mean, it was, yeah. it was Look great. At that. That's it was great. Amazing. It was great. So, yeah, shout out. Mm. Honestly, he should come to the facility. And, he and definitely should. He definitely should. So he did our online. That's how I met him. He did our online dinner in OTAs. And cool. It's it just yeah. good food. <sighs> Awesome. What a mm -hmm. what a note to end on about the Putin. Yeah, that was a great. great one. Yeah. Best Love ever. It. Um, all right. Matthew Bergeron, thank you so much for joining us on the Falcons in Focus podcast. I love hearing these stories, yeah. right? It, it's just I mean, it's inspiring even as you're doing the research for mm -hmm. it. This was another great one. Uh, so happy to have you on the program and so happy for the entire Falcons fan base to be, really be able to hear you know, about this guy yeah. that they watch every single Sunday. Get to so know you a little bit. 100%. Mm -hmm. So everybody do what you do. Rate, review, and subscribe to the Atlanta Falcons Podcast Network. And subscribe to our YouTube YouTube page. Why don't you, if I can say that right? <laughs> uh, and next week, we will be back with you with another great guest. See ya.